are real people with real problems. And here at Live Your Best Marriage, we want to be a source of inspiration and encouragement for all of you out there. Oh, yes. At Live Your Best Marriage, we believe that every marriage has a chance to be awesome and to be fulfilling. And if you guys want to connect with us more, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Whitney Shio. And I'm at Pesa Shio on, on uh, Twitter. Of course, you can like us on Facebook. Which is Facebook for slash Live Your Best Marriage. And of course, you can subscribe to the place where it all began, which is liveyourbestmarriage.com forward slash blog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so today we want to talk about three reasons why a work spouse is total BS. What do you mean work spouse? So I've been hearing this word a lot lately, and I know... It's been used for quite a while, but it seems like recently it's trending. Uh, what do you mean trending? It just seems to be more and more common. Um, like about a week ago, LinkedIn published an article saying how awesome it is to have a work spouse. Okay. So that was the last straw for me. I was like, no, 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 no. This is absolutely ridiculous. Because so, so you're going to work and you're getting a... A husband or a wife? Like, <laughs> no, no, you're not. It's supposedly a friend, a coworker who makes your day at work better. But okay. the reason why I was so outraged is because LinkedIn is seen as an authority. And if they are basically vomiting this disgusting idea onto all of us, mm -hmm. I was just totally upset by that, and so I have three. I, I wrote a blog post with five reasons why a work spouse is BS, but here I'm only gonna I'm only gonna give three. So, uh, so, so you're taking it from the point of view that a work spouse is um, basically you're about to cross the boundaries. It's a, it's gonna be like a close call where um, you are blurring the the spouse and works and working relationship pretty much the bottom line is you're making someone you work with way too important i'm not saying i'm not implying that they make it make them more important than the person at home but they're on that trajectory okay for sure so they're on that trajectory and um some folks will argue that hey we spend more than 10 hours a day with right. this person, right. but still they are not your wife. That's where the huge problem comes in because we spend, some of us are spending 40 to 60, maybe more hours every week with our coworkers yes. and our business associates. And that's fine. We have to make a living somehow. But if we're, it's bad enough that we're spending that much time away from the person we married. Yes. So to make matters worse, we're going to call the person who sits next to us our work wife or our work husband. Yeah. No, 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 Yeah, that no. sounds terrible. No. Reason number one, they don't love you. They are not your family. Just because you ha they're nice and they help you get through the office politics when things get rough, yeah. that does not mean it's true love. That does not mean they really care about you. Honestly, this is just so repulsive. Work spouse is like an oxymoron. Those two words should never go together. And we said the same thing a few weeks ago about open marriage. Yeah. Those two words do not belong together. They don't. They don't. So we're <laughs> they don't. <laughs> you can tell I'm way more passionate about no, that. I am than so Pesa is. No, I'm really passionate but because I, I honestly, see how it can actually break up a marriage. It's just it is so inappropriate. It is so beyond inappropriate and it's morally bankrupt. And it seems like sometimes I'm like, okay, is this not obvious? How just how weird this is like honestly they don't love you they are not your family they are not there to help you do laundry they are not there to help you cook they are not there to help you pay your bills they are not there to help you with anything for that matter they're just it's, there to help you go through your yes work. Yeah. i know it's nice to have friends to get through the day-to-day -day grind we're not ignoring that yes 
We are not ignoring that. Especially for some professions like firefighters and just there's some professions where you are basically going out there and saving lives and you go through some really crazy emotional things that you see at your jobs and some people just get so attached to their co-workers because they've gone through so quote unquote so much during their day maybe they went out to save a life they went whatever and well, so so some people so they literally cross the line between a co-worker that you are working with at a team and you saw you saw a lot of um heartbreaking things during your job to making them your spouse no we're not even getting to the level of a firefighter or a first responder. I I also read another article where this guy was saying he was so happy to have a work wife because when he shows up late, she has his favorite coffee ready. Whoa. Sitting on his desk in there. She's in the next cubicle over. So he's just excited that she brings donuts and she has his favorite coffee ready waiting for him when he shows up. And so I'm just like... Oh, I didn't even know this is what you're talking about. I'm like, okay, this is... Like, how weird is that? Like, I'm not saying it's wrong that the people at work even know your favorite coffee. But if they know how to make it and they actually get it ready for you, to me, that's like a red flag. Yes. And that is actually mentioned in... There's a pastor, David Carter, who wrote a book called Close Calls. Yes. And he did specifically talk about why... It's not good for someone to prepare your favorite snack or your favorite drink or anything and take a break with them at work because it gives you, it gives the two of you a special friendship that you don't have with anyone else. Yes. It just, it just brings you guys too close. And again, I know I sound like I'm way too passionate about this. That's There's nothing wrong to fight for your marriage because if you don't fight for your marriage, who's going to do that? Because reason number two is your your real spouse will feel neglected. Either like they totally are being neglected. They would, not only would they feel neglected, they actually are neglected. Yes, because the whole point is whoever has your attention has you. Has yes, whatever has your attention also has you. Yes. So every ounce of energy that is put into this so-called work spouse you're actually taking something away, something that rightfully belongs to your real spouse. Yes. They are missing out. It may not seem like it, but they really are. If they don't understand the inside jokes and... Especially if there's an inside joke where your spouse, even if their spouse was there, they won't even get it. And another point that was brought up in this article is the work spouse understands what happens at work. They get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay... All right, totally understand it, but when you come home and wouldn't it be nice to have a conversation with the person you married about it because you guys can exchange brand new stories that neither one of you have ever heard before. Yes. Doesn't that make it more interesting? Yes, it does. Wouldn't that? <laughs> yes, it does. See, he's just he's quick to agree with me. No, I'm agreeing no. with you cuz I I totally see like, where you're coming okay, from. Okay, you're yeah. the person you married does not need to un, does not need to be there every second of the shift. To understand what what goes on. All you have to do is invite them to a Christmas party. And they'll pretty much get the gist of it. Yes. They'll see a lot of politics happening firsthand. Just at a Christmas party. Yes. Honestly. Like, I would just think that it would be better to be able to come home to someone who was not at work. I would just think that that would be a better way to de-stress. And just forget about work. <laughs> forget about work. And also, uh, even if you have spent a lot of time at work, you need to start thinking in terms of how can I build my marriage? How can I actually build what I have instead of uh, splitting my energy f- between what I have at work, like what I ha- like my real marriage, and then this made up vir- <laughs> virtual marriage. <laughs> No, it's just it's just the fact. You know, that the funny thing is, I even I I also read somewhere that people also have. In, that's why I brought up the issue of virtual marriage because, some I heard that some people not only have a work spouse, but you can also have a virtual 
spouse. Mm -hmm. So people who play these virtual reality games where they are like in an alternative life, alternative life, <laughs> and it's like everything is made up. Yeah. They actually will get a, a wife right. in that other reality. And uh, right. I read an article where they actually, it actually becomes, it takes a life of its own mm -hmm. in the virtual mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And at first, you some people might just um, ignore it. Like, no, just, uh, just say, oh, this has nothing to do with me. But uh, more people are doing this virtual reality games mm -hmm. and... Remember, it's the same person mm -hmm. who is using their, their brain to come up with all these virtual reality things. Like, like, like it's, a, it's basically the same person who has a wife in the real world and also a different fake wife in the virtual reality world. And somebody else is playing the lady the other wife on the virtual reality. So it kind of gets confusing, but from the, <laughs> I know it gets confusing, but from the article I read, mm -hmm. yeah, it's actually becoming a problem. And actually people are getting divorced mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the real wife finds out that the, this guy is more attached to the virtual mm -hmm. wife than, mm -hmm. than them. And it just bring up the, its own set of issues. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, so as you can see, it's pretty twisted. Very twisted. It's <laughs> very interesting it's that wow that's that's even um that's really profound actually mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. know that a, a wife would be that upset yeah. with with a virtual spot with a, is it a game yeah there's a lot of games where you actually like you live in a fake city and yeah you, yeah you, you have this identity identity everything you mm -hmm. pay you actually use money it's like you mm -hmm. just it's like literally a life right Right. You are living okay. another life. Okay. And for people who don't do that, it's like um, you can think it's funny or whatever. But actually, mm -hmm. it's a lot of people are doing it. Millions of people are doing it. Right. And they use money there. They buy stuff. They, it's, just, it's just like a, a, a city. So they, so they start a family. Everything. They buy a house yeah. and everything. Yeah. So she was, she was obviously jealous of May the fact that he sp spent that much time yes. in. And he chose a wife. Yeah. Yeah. Chose a wife, has a family and every, and this is not just one, this is not, not one couple. A lot of couples are having issues, not because of a, a real quote unquote girlfriend, but mm -hmm. because of virtual so they kind of feel like it's an emotional attachment. Then. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. See, so that's... It, so So imagine if someone can be... If a game can be that upsetting yeah. to a marriage and actually cause a divorce, yes. what about someone that you actually sit next to every single day? I would think that the whole work spouse thing would be way more damaging. Yeah, very, very, so, very. Um, and because and the thing is, I mean, the reason why I bring up you know, the real spouse feeling neglected is because if, I mean, if they're a stay at home spouse, can you imagine, you know, being alone and not having someone to talk to? And then when your, your spouse comes home, you're super excited yes. to actually have a conversation with someone other than the kids. And then they're probably busy on Facebook mm -hmm. or texting oh, this oh, work spouse. Or they, maybe they have gone to the virtual reality. The, yeah, the virtual reality. <laughs> or or they've, or um, I know in some cases, they actually accept phone calls oh, yeah. from the work spouse. You know, and I just honestly, like, like just, I like to take a second and, and think about that. Because that's, that's not a fun situation to be in no. at all. Totally, totally not. When when your spouse feels alone, hopefully they'll they'll say something and you and it can be resolved because I I mean with the divorce rate that we're seeing, you um, just yeah is, you like you just don't want to add one more issue that is gonna rock your marriage. Right. Yeah. Right. So so reason number three. So what was reason number two? So okay, reason number one was they don't love you. Just because they help you get through a shift, that mm. does not equal true love. No. 
They're there because they're getting paid. They are not there to help you because they want to help you. And if they, when it's time to switch a job, they'll switch a job. They won't stay because of you, right? That's actually in the next point. Okay. Number two was your real spouse feels neglected or really is neglected. So reason number three that having a work spouse is total BS is it's temporary. The person you married has promised to love you and live with you yeah. for the rest of their life. Yes. They have made a true commitment to you. But the work spouse, I mean, what are you going to do when they accept a new job offer somewhere else? Or, yeah, or if they are transferred to another location. Right. Yeah. So what happens then to this awesome relationship? This... The super special friendship that you guys have built. I guess some people will be like, okay, fine. It's a wax spouse and I'll get another one. Get a new one. <laughs> so, so the thing is, the fact that it's temporary, to me, that is just like, like a huge, huge red flag. Like, okay, this, this, the word spouse should not be anywhere near this situation. This is not a commitment. This is not love. This is not real. No. This is like a little game that's being played. And just to put and some and just to put your whole family through that and I don't want to be too preachy but it's not a good idea. And another thing is it's okay, yeah. It's not yeah, we don't I know. I guess we sound preachy. We don't mean it that way. <laughs> it's just that it's just so unfair. To when you see these things happening, we Pace and I went to a Christmas party once, and this guy was introducing his wife to his one of the female co workers. And he was like, Oh, yeah, this is my work wife, and it was supposed to be a joke. And the so called work wife said, Oh, yeah, I keep him in line, and as if the real wife was supposed to be thankful for something. Yeah. Like, oh, she keeps him in line. Like, she's doing a good thing. Yeah. And it was just super, super awkward because the real wife clearly did not understand a lot of the inside jokes that were going on yeah. between this guy and gal. And so imagine if it was awkward for us <laughs> just being there. I don't know how that poor wife felt. So, again, when we say it's temporary, this is not a long-lasting thing. And for the ones that actually develop into a relationship, a lot of affairs dissolve just as quickly as they started. Yes. Honestly. Like, they just, they turn off as quickly as they turned on. You're it right. It just, You're it right. does not, it fizzles out so quickly, but... The the family, though, that was affected by that, everybody feels terrible. Even the person who had the affair wishes they didn't do it. Oh, you're right. It's just, I mean, honestly, like, how many times have we heard that from therapists say that the person who cheated actually wishes they didn't do it and they feel horrible every time they even think about it. So yes. it's just giving in to that... Pressure. Short-term gratification or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is what gets them. And so, I just, honestly, so I just have a heart for the spouses who are affected by that, who are hurt by that, and also the kids who get hurt by that. So what can you do, um, what advice can you give so that we can be able to guard against this? I First of all, I just want to throw this idea out there that the, the respect and the admiration that we think we get from coworkers, I honestly think is superficial. Okay. I really, I mean, I'm not saying that people, it's impossible to respect someone you work with. I'm just saying it only goes so far. Yes. It, they, they don't respect you and admire you as much as the person who married you. And, the, and, and also they won't be there. They just won't be there. They at won't all, be there period. when you are like, uh, let's say you are sick, you are having cancer. Like you know, like there are some things that you are going through that only your wife or only your spouse 
or your kids will will stick up for you because just it's just not in the place for somebody who you work with to go all the way right most of them won't show up when when you really need help it's like no. they don't even exist yeah. honestly and i mean i mean we've we've all seen that we've, because, we've because seen they that don't happen. need to exist at that time cuz that's not a place for them to be it's not a place for them to be and it's not convenient for them either yeah honestly so that would be but, my my first bit of advice would be just to chill out and just be cognizant of the fact that these people are strangers. Yes. They they really are. People we work with are strangers <laughs> or acquaintances yes. until we decide to make them a personal friend. Yes. You're the one who has the power to decide if you want to upgrade this person to become your friend. Oh yeah. And get to know them outside of work. And so that would just honestly, like I think that's pretty much the bottom line is just knowing that okay, is this person really going to be there for me when I need them? I mean, okay, yeah, showing up and getting donuts, that's nice, but oh yeah. When I get home, I'm going to expect dinner on the table too. I'm going to expect like <laughs> I'll expect help with laundry. Mhm. But and it's not so much so much about like the chores and the tasks but which are also very important not to mention raising children raising children also being there emotionally for you because they are, uh, they you and them made a decision to be there for each other for the rest of your life yeah. right and so and and that emotional support is mm-hmm. super super huge oh yeah because of the fact that when you give your attention to someone outside the marriage and which is hard to even realize that we do that because we think our attention is like unlimited. Yeah. But energy and attention are so precious and and it is limited. I mean yes. you're actually giving less and less to the people you live with. Yeah. So that's just one of the major points I want to make is the fact that I used to think that I can take on an extra project here and there because my attention span is unlimited but it's not for every project that i take on i'm actually giving less attention to my kids oh yeah whether i like that feeling or not that's what's happening so it's the same way if i'm sitting here texting some guy that i worked with or whatever mm-hmm. That is attention that is going to him, and it's not going to my husband. Your and guy, so, your real guy, the right? Real, <laughs> the real guy. So <laughs> not your virtual guy. So that whole idea of emotional support—it's it is just sometimes it really is hard to realize that we're not we're not giving it. We're not giving support because all of our attention and our energy is focused on someone else or oh, yeah. something else. So. So anyways, but now that I've had this huge rant. No, I mean I I totally get it because you're doing this so that you can make sure that uh you support folks who are going through this because sometimes we might even be thinking that it's actually very harmless. It's just a work spouse. There's no big deal, but mm-hmm. you are actually planting the seed for which can actually lead to either a uh, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery we'll slope. And sometimes even um that work spouse thing can actually be because of flirting. Mm-hmm. People are just like flirt here and mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. and you never know where it's going to go. It's not just right. harmless. Right. Right. So that's the thing. And also <laughs> <laughs> I think one reason why I'm so passionate about this issue is because for many many years I I was the stay-at-home spouse. And but Pesa and I were very fortunate because on his off days we would do a lot of activities together. Yeah. We would do I mean his, the, just just the way that his schedule worked out, we had a lot of off days that we were able to do grocery shopping together. We were able to watch movies together and just hang out with our kids and stuff like that. So, not everybody has that. No way. Not everybody has that much spare time. No. So, you know, 
that helps them build that, keep that connection strong Going, at yeah. home. And so, um, I would just suggest that any time that you have available, whether it's on weekends or evenings or whatever it is, and I know everybody's tired of weekday evenings. I, I totally understand that. But I would just say that any extra time that you do have, make sure to build that connection even stronger with the people at home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't. There's no need in constantly being on Facebook with people from work or, I mean, there's enough. I mean, Dude, I mean you, there's 40 hours for that. Like, for them, they get 40 hours. That's enough. I mean, yeah, don't even add more time at home. Like, you're basically ignoring your spouse. So, folks, thank you once again so much for listening. We are really excited to have you here with us. And we just hope that we can be a source of inspiration or at least encouragement to anybody out there who is struggling or if you just want to see a real life example of another couple. Because everywhere I look in pop culture, I don't get encouragement to stay with my husband. No. I, I get the opposite. So, anyway, we just want to say thank you for being here, and we will definitely be back in a few days, and stay tuned for updates about the uh, video series that we've got coming up this month. Um, you might not hear the update after this episode, but we will make sure that you guys get plenty of info about that. Okay, folks, until next time, bye, and God bless, and keep your marriage strong. Bye. Are you tired of being upset, lonely, feeling empty, or just plain frustrated with your marriage? And no matter how hard you try, you're not getting anywhere, just going in circles. No matter how much you try to make time for one another in your schedule, or how many times you say, I'm sorry, Pesa and I have put together 99 ideas to help you connect with that one special person so that things can start to be more like the way they were before everyday life got in the way and caused the two of you to drift apart. We want you to have 99 ways to show love to your spouse absolutely free. You can find it at 99waystoshowlovetoyourspouse.com Because here at Live Your Best Marriage, we truly hope that the two of you can move closer together and enjoy the connection that comes from achieving a stronger bond. Again, that's 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com. That's the number 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com.